Hello and welcome to the Just Talking About Films podcast. My name is Ian Sargenson. And my name is Luke Taylor and it is great to be with you to dig into our, one of our favourite topics and that is just talking about films. Um, now, it's been a while since we did this podcast. Um, I'm just trying to work out how long, how many months has it been? It's been three months. Three months. I think the last one we did was the last week in July. And then I was unavailable since then for something I may talk about in the future, but just been a, a bit of a time where I haven't been able to get involved. Um, I haven't really been able to watch many films, so um, just needed to take a break. But I'm delighted that we are back. I'm delighted that we're back as well. It's wonderful to, because um, I've been watching a lot. Of, I mean, you mightn't have seen many, but I've seen <laughs> I've seen a ton and haven't been able to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody to talk about at home. Well, yeah, well, OK, yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> but, but the more, the better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could have come on and done it on your own, but I guess that would have just been you talking about. I, c- I can't imagine that what that, that would be like. <laughs> just me but talking to myself. Say, good, good to be back and, yeah, we'll be, you know, back with new content over the coming weeks, talking about the new films we've seen, getting new guests in, um, and just really picking up where we left, left off. So thank you for those that have sent messages of support um, and... Sorry for those that have been waiting for new episodes, but we're back now and we're very much looking forward to continuing and getting bigger and better. Yeah, yeah, we are. So let's pick up with, we can't ask what you've watched recently, um, but we can ask what you've watched and not talked about. Yeah, I mean, so recently, so I haven't watched a film since July because, as I say, there's been things going on and I didn't have the, the capacity or the time to give to it Um and is, I'm more disappointed with the films that I have missed. So I haven't managed to see um, see James Bond yet. Wait right. until so many years, it gets delayed and delayed and delayed. And when it comes <laughs> out, I can't go see it. So I'm hoping to put that right over this weekend or certainly the early part of next week. Um, the same with Many Saints of Newark. I was really looking forward to that, but I haven't got to see that yet. Um, but what have I seen and haven't talked about? I'm not sure if I talked about the Shawshank Redemption last time, but I rewatched that. Um, and it's one of them films that I'd watched a long time ago and loved it because of its quality and its cuff on. I remember that I loved it, but I wanted to watch it again through maybe more adult, and more mature and more refined eyes. And I did that. And I think I enjoyed it more this time than I ever did before. I certainly appreciated so much more about it, appreciated all the stuff that everybody talks about, about it, the story, the acting, the just the direction, which from a director that I haven't really seen a lot of before or since. Do you know what I mean? So I think... Um, Who was yeah. it, a director? Was it Frank Darabond? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, um, yeah, he's done, he's done some good... He's done some lots of good stuff as well, but... Uh, yeah, but I just can't remember any, you know, that jumped out to me, so... I think he did such he an did iconic film. Say what? I think he did Arachnophobia. Yeah, I think he did a lot around that time, but I'm not sure he's yeah. done a lot recently, has he? No, no, maybe not. Um, I think he did. I think he was. He did. I, I don't know what his involvement totally was as it went on, but I know he was involved in The Walking Dead when that first started. Mm. So that might have took up his time. But I just loved Shawshank Redemption. It's just one of them things that, that it's a story, and I know people say, "Oh, but about books and different." But this is one of them films that almost feels like a book because you've got the narration. Mm. Yeah, um, and it just, it just, yeah, just so good. And so the casting, I think, was stupendous in it. So I just appreciate it on a whole new level. And yeah, just an it's a very good film. It is a very good film. And that moment at the at the end is such a moment of triumph. Yeah, um, it's just you know he he goes through the mill so much. He goes through so many things, and. He, but that moment where he when he's in the rain and he stands outside the sewer, yeah, um, it's wonderful. And he's put his arms up and he's got his yeah. old bag. Yeah, it was just great. Really, really enjoyed it. I thought the score was good as well. Um, there's yeah, there's enough, you know, there's enough danger in it. It's just yeah, it's just it's just good. I just really enjoyed it. There's good antagonists and protagonists, and you know you're rooting for early on and. Um, so yeah, it's written, and then the justice, and you said the, the actual crescendo of triumph was just really good, and one of them ones where you almost oh. want to punch the air. You put that so well—a crescendo of triumph. Oh, well, you know, That's... I've had three months off. 
So. <laughs> I like that. What a way to describe it. A crescendo of triumph. Yes, that is that is an excellent way to describe it. <laughs> and then um, two others that I watched just before, because we were due to record the podcast, I think, the day that I couldn't make it. So two yeah. I watched. the last two that I watched were 10 Things I Hate About You, again, revisiting it. Um, it's one of them ones, again, I appreciated on some kind of level when I first watched it, thought it was all right. Well, I appreciate it on a whole new level this time in terms of, you know, the story that it's and the adaptation that it is from, you know, Shakespeare and stuff like that. And um, I just thought it was a much better story now that I'm old. I just appreciate it and like the film a lot more. It's a very well put together film, isn't it? Um... Yeah, I thought so. I thought a lot of funny references in there, some good acting from Styles and Leds, you know what I mean? Just well cast. Um, yeah, I just really, really liked it. Yeah, I, I rewatched that recently. I think I think because it came on Disney Plus, didn't our Disney uh, as part of it, and it was like, oh, I haven't seen that in a while, but thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, might well have been that. And then the last one was called A Bad Day for the Cut, and it was like I'd recommended one to you before called Calibre. Oh yeah, on Netflix, and I really enjoyed Calibre. It was really dark, and I don't think I've ever, well, certainly not for a long time, watched a film with that much palpable tension in it um and then so on the back of that netflix recommends stuff and it recommended this which is a similar kind of thing british made film a guy his mother um gets killed his elderly mother who he lives with and he 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 basically is just some farmer that goes on a mission to try and find out why and what and he covers a lot of secrets and it's um, in the same ilk of the Save Calibre and Dead Man's Shoes, a bit, you know, a lot of violence and quite earthy, because like many of these British made films are. So, yeah, I think that was on Netflix, I think, because I think that recommended it, A Bad Day for the Cut, it's called. So it was all right. Um, but it's just one of them ones that I thought, oh, yeah, I like that. I liked Calibre, so it's recommended on the back of that, so we'll give it a go. One of them films that I'd never probably hear of otherwise, so... Mm. I did enjoy that. So they're the three things that I think I haven't talked about that I know that I've definitely watched. Okay, cool. Um, well, I've, I haven't watched as many as I normally would because normally it's like, oh, got to watch some films to get them ready for this. Uh, you know. Yeah. And, um, but I have, I have watched a fair few, I guess, over the time we've not been meeting. So I'll go through a few. I'll go start with the most recent and go backwards. And when you get bored, tell me to stop. Okay. Although don't do it on the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to see uh, June um, a few weeks ago and uh, we got to see a preview screen of that just before it came out and it is, it's spectacular. Yeah, I mean, I've heard good things about it, right? And and this is a question I want to, because the things I've heard about, I think people are saying, you've got to watch it. It's a cinematic masterpiece, all of mm. this. But I hated the original, Luke. Well... Does that matter? No, it doesn't. The, the, so it doesn't not automatically follow that I will dislike this one. No, no. Uh, the original, I would say, is the that book done. I don't want to say badly. Oh no, let's just say badly. Okay. <laughs> this is that book done well. Right. Okay. Now, there's some people who prefer the first one and don't like this one. That's they're, they're more entitled to think that. But I think there's, they're different enough that you won't. Yeah, I, I don't think you'll feel that that's an issue. Yeah, I just thought it was proper weird. Oh, I mean, it is proper weird, but um, but it's got this spectacular edge. To, I mean, it is a one to see on the big screen because on a big, big screen because everything in it is so. I mean, some of the ships are so huge, and then you get the perspective of the things. And it's yeah, I, I have to admit, never read the book, so I didn't always follow the story. There was right. time as I, 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 we came out. I said I didn't always know what was going on, but I well, always that's knew the how the thing characters. For me. Sorry? Because I think that's the thing about the original. It was, and a bit like, and maybe it's not so now, but the first time I watched Total Recall, it was just like, it's so much nonsense. I don't have to work this hard to follow it. <laughs> but that, then watching Total Recall later, I appreciate it a bit more. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's it's one of the, I, I couldn't say I always knew what was going on, but I always knew how the characters felt about what was going on. <laughs> okay. And, and that, that that means something. It means I'm, I'm, I'm if I'm engaged in the characters and I'm following the characters, Sometimes they don't really know what's going on. So I guess, I, you know, that's... So there was times where I was a little bit lost, but I knew how people felt about it. And yeah, I was engaged in the characters. Yeah, but you know what I'm like, Luke. If someone's... 
don't care how good it looks if it's if it's nonsense like with Tenet and oh, it's not like it. it's not that kind of not know what's going on it's just they keep talking about different uh, like you know different people that you've not met yet and different things and all, all this stuff and it's just like there's a lot of words to get in your in your head and and but uh, yeah I found that like with stuff like Game of Thrones early on when yeah, all yeah, that silly kind games of thing, yeah. and you're like hang on who's he and what's he done that who's, who's, who's always supposed to know these people are huh? Yeah, it's a little bit like that, but uh, but it does explain enough, I think, as it goes on. Okay. Um, my only complaint about it really is, and it's just the nature of it, it's only half the book. So part two's coming, and thank, when we went to see it, part two hadn't been green-lighted or anything. And I came away thinking, well, if they don't make part two, I've wasted my time. Yeah. But part two is coming, so I feel a little bit more like I haven't wasted my time. <laughs> That's good, then. Everyone's winning. <laughs> So it is good, but it does feel like half a film. Even though it's really long, it feels like half a film. Um, good. So I, I came out a bit dissatisfied, but enjoyed it. Enjoyed I've it. only heard good things, but I don't know, because most of that's on Twitter. Um, yeah. And I'm like, is this just people who either feel as though they have to like it or they're into that, you know, the June book and the story and stuff, but I'll give it a go. Yeah, it's it's worth a go, and it's worth seeing on the big screen because it is. It's it. I mean, yeah, the visuals are stunning on it. Um, then before that, I rewatched for the first time in many many years. Last time I saw this, I was probably a child. Well, not a child, but you know, quite young. Big Trouble in Little China, yeah. <laughs> which I only had very very vague memories of, and it's weird watching a film where every now and again something happens, and you're like. Oh yeah, I remember that. Um, there's, the, I mean, it's it's a bonkers film, but like, there's like a monster living in the basement or something. And, yeah, yeah, I remember that. And I'd completely forgotten about it until it was on screen. I was like, I remember being scared of that. <laughs> I remember that really freaking me out. Or, or the, um, you know, the bad guy when he's all old and creepy. And I remember, you know, one of those things like, oh yeah, that really creeped me out as a kid. And I'd completely yeah. forgotten it happened, but. It's, yeah, it's, it's one of them ones again, it'd be the same as you around that time that I'll have watched it a lot, the same as Escape from New York and all of these. I can't really remember, I just remember liking them as a kid. <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, I just remembered liking it. There's films like that that I have watched, like that I remember that I liked as a kid and I've watched them as an adult. And I don't know how, but there's like so much violence or sex. Or so, I, I must have just cut it out because all I remember is like. <laughs> Well, you saw the version that was on ITV. The film. <laughs> it's like, how did I not? I was not affected by this. But I, I had loads of films like that. Like as a kid, that the only version of it I had seen, or the only version of it I had, was the version ITV showed. Right. And they'd cut all of that stuff out. So actually, yeah. when you see it older, and you're like, I don't remember any of this. About a twenty-minute film. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like that joke in Community um, where one of the characters says, "Oh yeah, I saw Pulp Fiction on an airplane." It's a lovely twenty-minute-long film about friends who love cheeseburgers in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I enjoyed that. It was good fun. Um, one of those films where, yeah, hadn't seen it in years, but uh, it's yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, I did the two Ghostbusters films in preparation for for the new one. Yeah. When I say I mean, the two Ghostbusters films, I mean Ghostbusters one and Ghostbusters two. Yeah, yeah. But th- this new Ghostbusters film is probably the film I'm most excited about out mm. of all of them. The new releases that come in, potentially Top Gun, but I'm still a bit scared that they'll ruin it. I'm less scared with Ghostbusters just simply from the um, trailers. Yeah, I think the trailers look really, really good. It does, and it looks it looks like Ghostbusters, but it doesn't look like Ghostbusters at the same time. Yeah. It doesn't look like a, a copy of it. No, it's yeah, it's you know, some set far beyond, which is which is I, I like. So, but the the first one is still my favorite. But yeah, I rewatched that recently. But did you enjoy rewatching them? So I know that you're a big fan. I, I, I really enjoy Ghostbusters, and the first one, I, I don't think you can improve on it. It's just everything about that film just works. Maybe by accident, but it works. Mm. And uh, although the one thing, 
the more the world changes, I guess, or the older you get, the more you watch P. Venkman and you go, I thought he was so cool as a kid. <laughs> but man, that guy's a creep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he, he should be arrested. I mean, he, he says he's madly in love with Dana Barrett after just meeting her in, a, in the most... Cre- oh, man, you know, he, he should be locked up. The bit with the cards at the beginning. <laughs> yes, I mean... No wonder he's fired from the. I mean, no. you know, uh, the complaints list against him must have been like a mile long. But it's still such an iconic film, right? It is, and still love watching him. But it is more. It's, it's one of those things, and you know, man, in the eighties, that seemed cool. Yeah, but the same with Big. I didn't realize how immoral and unethical Big was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's, don't even want to go there with Big. <laughs> no, even. Back to the Future. It's like, it's his mum. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I really enjoyed Ghostbusters. And then Ghostbusters 2, I've always kind of been a little, mm, with Ghostbusters 2. But I think that's just because it has high expectations. Yeah, of course. And actually, on its own, it's a perfectly fine film. Um, And uh, we, I mean, you remember the, the bad guy in that? Not the, not the big, you know, the one who's in the painting, but the guy who was working for him. Yeah, uh, Janusz, I think. Yeah, that is a that is an off the wall performance. It's it's the more you look at it, the more like that that actor's doing something really, really, really different. I can't remember it, but I remember the character. I can't He's, remember what he did. Try and rewatch them before the new one comes out. But that is, yeah, is mad, do. absolutely mad. Um, there's some bits of it don't work, but yeah, had a lot of fun with that one. Good stuff. Um, and then. Hold on. Oh, no time to die. Yeah, did you enjoy that? I will. I, should I keep quiet about it until you've seen it? Yeah, we can do it. We can do a week on that, can't we? Once I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to spoil anything accidentally. And then I did uh, Whiplash um, for a movie club. Yeah, love Whiplash. Uh, what a great film. Yeah, very good. Very good. It's uh, it's essentially you, you, you go to watch that film you're saying to J.K. Simmons, I want you to um <laughs> to be abusive to me for two hours. Yeah. Two, <laughs> just two tremendous acting performances I found. Yeah. The chemistry and dynamic was great. And I think I really appreciated what a good actor Miles Teller was from that. Yeah. I mean, I don't like Miles Teller, but that helps the film for me. Okay. <laughs> um because I quite like enjoyed him. Did he watching him get shouted at. <laughs> Why don't you like him? I don't know. I don't know. There's just, you know, just some people you just look at and you go, I don't like you. <laughs> no, I don't. But <laughs> usually I don't like people if if you give me a reason. But okay, Luke, if that's you. Uh, I, but I, yeah, I, I like you, but I thought his performance and that was great. And I appreciated him as a new actor. Uh, I'm not sure a, he's, I'm not sure he's supposed to like Miles Teller. Everything he's been in, he's played the sort of person I think you're not supposed to like. Yeah, I think, wasn't he in, was it Divergent he was in? Yeah. I think so. Was it that? And he wasn't particularly nice. That was it. The Hunger Games. It was one of them. Yeah. War, did you see him in War Dogs? No. In that, and it's like I don't think he was supposed to like him in that. I think he he plays arrogant really well. Yeah, I think he does, and I think I thought he was really good in Whiplash, and he's in the new Top Gun, isn't he? So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, and hopefully he'll play that kind of guy you don't like. Uh, well, he's playing Goose's son, isn't he? Yeah. So. Doesn't matter how bad he arrogant he is, you still love him because he's Goose's yeah. son. Yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah, that should be fun. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed Whiplash. Um, then just before that, watched the Green Knight. The Green um, Knight. The Green Knight. It's um, it's, it's it's just come on to Prime. It, it's new on to Prime. I mean, it just it was meant to come to the cinemas, but it didn't come. Um, it is. Um, by David David Lowry, who did um, oh, what did he do? Peach Dragon. He's done a lot of other things. Peach Dragon. It's not fair to say he did Peach Dragon, but uh, it is visually the most amazing film I've seen in a long time. Honest, the whole film is like a dream, but it makes about as much sense as a dream as well. Okay, but it, it's it's weird. It's it's slow. It's you've got to really be patient with it. Um, but absolutely beautiful. It's one of those films you'll either love it or you'll despise it. Um, but it's the story of the Arthur, you know, the King Arthur, uh, the Green Knight, and th- this this weird quest to. to uh, it's just the strangest film. Okay, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. 
I mean, it's yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's worth worth your time on Prime. I yeah, uh, I, I would recommend it, but I would recommend you, you don't watch it when you're tired. Okay, because if you fall asleep, you'll not sure whether you're still awake <laughs> or not. <laughs> Am I still watching this? Um, and anything what else have I seen recently? There was Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, with a new Marvel film. Yeah, um, and it got it was it was fun. You know, I probably forgot most of what happened in it after I came out. There's some fun action sequences. There's a one that takes place on scaffold and outside building, very well done. But you know, it was alright. It was. It gets a little bit too CGI at the end, hmm. which is a shame because as a martial arts Marvel film, it was going really well, and then they just chuck so much stuff in at the end. I mean, not one, but two big dragon things. Yeah. And it just all feels a little familiar. And you can't tell what's going on at the end. Um, so, you know. And then I did, for the first time, I'd never seen it before. I did uh, Unforgiven. You'd never seen it before? No, I don't know why. But I'd never, I, I'll be honest with you. I always assumed, because it was, you know, when it won all those Oscars when I was younger. I was going to say, it's an Oscar winner. Why do you know it was? It? But it's always, I just assumed it was going to be boring. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I just, I don't know why I assumed that. Just at the time, maybe just all the Oscar clips I saw as a kid, none of them really, and so I'd never seen it. What a brilliant film. So good. Yeah. So yeah. good. I'm, I'm kind of angry with myself that I'd never seen it. Star in it. Sorry? So what? I, I, I said, I'm kind of angry with myself that I hadn't seen it. Yeah. I mean, to star and direct in it, to such high level on both, uh, I thought it was really good. And I thought Gene Hackman was excellent in it. Yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. And again, I had the wrong... I thought Gene Hackman played like his buddy in it. I, I, I don't know why. I just assumed it was going to be this very... But no, it's, it was such a such a good film. I think it's my favourite Western. Hmm, mm, maybe, maybe. That are Young, young Guns too. Um yeah, it just blew me away. That film. It's so, and there's this just emotionally drew me in so much in that story. I thought it was brilliant. Really enjoyed yeah, it. It is really a good film. Um, and then one more to pick up on, I guess. Uh, we could keep going, but uh, uh, the visit. Have you seen the visit? I want to say yes, but I can't remember. I just know it rings a bell. It's a uh, M Night. Oh, Shamalam Alien. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's like a found footage film where the kids go, they go to the grandma's house for the weekend, the grandma they've never met, and she's uh, making a documentary about her grandparents. And it is, well, oh, it gets weird. It gets really strange. It's got, it's got some big twists in it, as you'd expect. Um, but actually, I really enjoyed it. Again, one of those films I just missed, but it was, it's worth worth watching. So I remember, I know the name, and I know that it was a horror thing, but... I don't yeah, it disturbed know. me. It really did. It, it disturbed the, you? Yeah, I don't know, exactly. <laughs> but it was one of those ones where it, it really tapped into the idea of going to your grandparents' house as a kid was always a little strange, because it always felt a little... Because they lived so differently to you, and, yeah, it was... It taps into that sort of creepiness of going to grand and granddad's house for the weekend. It was fun. Good stuff. Um, and then I've seen loads more, but I think probably that's enough to hit on, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've been out the loop so long, so I can't even remember, think of the things that I'm looking forward to seeing. I don't know what's out. I don't know what's... Because there's some stuff that will be coming out on a DVD and things now that you'll be able to see soon that you've, yeah. you'll have missed. Yeah, will be, but looking forward just to getting back into watching films and, say, just being... Able to a bit of escapism, a bit of relaxation, and um, yeah, it'd be good. I think June, I was looking forward to. to yeah, it's, it's worth worth it. Ghostbusters is what it's November the seventeenth, I think, isn't it? I know. I hope it doesn't get delayed again. I'm I'm ready for Ghostbusters now. Yeah, it'd be good. One thing I am annoyed about though, Luke, and I don't we hadn't planned to talk about this, but I was really outraged about the other day with Disney. Have you seen what they've done? Oh, I think I know what you're going to say. They've like they're not calling it a remake or a reimagination. Uh, it's just they just 
some weird money spinning nonsense with Home Alone. Yeah, Ho- Home Sweet Home Alone is what they've it called made, it. I want it made me want to throw my television out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can't, I can't see any reason why that film exists. But they did Adventures in Babysitting, they remade that. I mean, I know it's not much of a classic, but it's like they've re- they've done Turner and Hooch as a series. It's like, come on, just get some new ideas, the Mighty Ducks. It's like, I mean, but, and I could let it all go, but Home Alone, you can't improve on it. No, I mean, there has been, I mean, there was Home Alone, Home Alone 2 were great, but there has been other Home Alone films that are terrible. Yeah. But what are they doing? Because you can't be like trying to bring it to a new audience because people still watch Home Alone every year. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's, it, I mean, it hasn't dated that badly because he doesn't no, use no. a lot of technology. He uses paint cans and stuff. And Macaulay Culkin, what, regardless of what anyone says, I think that's, and this may sound stupid, but one of the finest acting performances ever in terms of what he was and the casting and everything. Nobody else would have, anybody else in that film wouldn't be nearly as good. Mm. I just no, think he's, it's he's perfect at, at the right time in the right place, and I'm genuinely annoyed that the home sweet home alone. <laughs> I mean, I, it boggles the mind. Here's a question though for you: Are you going to watch it? Well, this is it because Kate, my wife, was like, "You'll watch it, won't you?" And I was like, "Yeah." Because what else? How can I mourn about it from an um, a place of no authority? The only danger is, and I don't anticipate this being anywhere near, but I did the same with La La Land. I wanted to tell everyone how rubbish it was when it came out because I was sick of hearing about it. So I went to watch it so I could speak from a place of authority and absolutely loved it. I did the well, same with Great Showman know. and I was right. Home Sweet Home Alone might be your favourite Home Alone film yet. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but it's, it, is, it is a bit unfair. If they'd have called it something else, I don't suppose it can, because the Nick Lines from it, I've seen the trailer, I was genuinely offended. But I'm going into it wanting to hate it. Yeah, I think I am as well, yeah. Because I'm just angry at the idea. Just get new ideas. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it does feel like everything's getting recycled again and again Particularly and again. from Disney, so they've reimagined everything. So they go, all right, we'll do live-action versions of everything. Or then we'll do mini-series of the Mighty Ducks of... Turner and Hooch and whatever else, and then we'll make remake Adventures in Babysit. Now we're remaking Home Alone. I mean, if you're going to remake films, we've talked about this before. Remake films that need remaking. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, that's left me in a foul mood now. Because <laughs> I, I love Christmas films, right, Luke? And I, yep. in November, I genuinely watch cheesy Christmas films. Oh, right? of course. In December, then I get into the big hitters. The ones that I like, you know what I mean? But I'll, I'll be watching all the Hallmark ones and then the Christmas 24 ones, you know, Grandma had a Christmas tree and Christmas Angel in a car. <laughs> and I'll watch all of them through November. Um, and like even, what was it, the last couple that, um, that was it was it Netflix that did with... Oh, with the Christmas Prince and all of that stuff. No, they did the ones with, uh, what's he called? Kurt Russell. Oh, the Santa Claus ones with him. Yeah, the Christmas yeah. Chronicles. Yeah, so I did, so did they new ideas, right? It weren't the greatest films, weren't the worst, but I thought Christmas films for a new generation, do that. Stop ripping off things. But, <laughs> yeah, so I'll probably watch, like, because I the closer we get to Christmas, the more serious my films are. So Home Alone is, like, Christmas Eve or 23rd. Die Hard is Christmas Eve. Do you know what I mean? Speaking of which... The further we are towards Christmas, the better I think the film is. That's Nakatomi Plaza behind me. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, um, it isn't Christmas till I see hands falling from Nakatomi <laughs> Plaza. <laughs> but it's like... Um, the, the Home Sweet Home Alone will probably be 30, 30th of November. Yeah, that's how get it away early. I rate it. Yeah, that's It might just idea. be on, like, be before Christmas red dress or whatever. Well, I remember as well, movie club. This when we meet this this in a few weeks' time, we're all going to suggest Christmas movies and put them all up in a hat and come out with yeah. a few to watch. Well, you suggest Home Sweet Home Alone. I'm going to smash a laptop. <laughs> but yeah, I probably will watch it, Luke. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. I, I am ready to watch it, not to like it. I'm all, yeah. I'm only watching it 
so once I've watched that, just get on my Twitter feed because everyone's going to know what I think. <laughs> Disney, they will answer me. Fair enough. Now, if I like it and you don't, that would allow us to use it for <laughs> something that we're going to start bringing to the podcast soon. Well, yeah, if you like it and I don't, I might be the end of the podcast, Luke. Because <laughs> um, that's something we're hoping to do in the next uh, yeah. couple of weeks is introduce a new feature. We would have a topic where we were looking at a question or, you know, uh, different types of films. And we thought it'd be fun just really to get into, we're going to call it, oh, well, maybe call it something like Into the Thunderdome. And we're going to put some films in the Thunderdome. And for example, if it turns out that I think Home Sweet Home Alone is the best of them all, and Ian disagrees, we'll both put our cases and we'll get uh, a Twitter poll up the week after and we'll get people to vote on it. That's not going to happen with this film, by the way, because I'm not no. going to like it. We'll both discuss it and I'll tell Luke why he's wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then Twitter will agree with me or we'll shut this whole operation down. <laughs> but, yeah, there's certain things like, yeah, but... the. There's certain opinions I will tolerate people having their own opinion. There's certain things where I'll go, you're just making it up to wind me up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's... Yes. I mean, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll we'll look at topics. And by the way, suggest some on Twitter, tweet us with some topic suggestions. Like, for example, one we were discussing before we came on, which is the best Terminator film? We know that one of our guests, uh, Ollie, holds a very controversial opinion on this. Um, is it Genesis? He said was no. The best. I think it's Terminator Salvation. He says is the best Terminator film. Either way, he's wrong. But he know, we might get him on to put his case forward. He is, and then we'll have a, a vote on Twitter after. So we'll start doing that over the next couple of weeks. And um, so, if you have any suggestions, um, which is the best Alien film, um, or even something like um, James Bond, good or bad? Who's the best Bond? Who's the best Bond? Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, I'd enjoy that one. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do that over the next couple of weeks. We'll, we'll try and come up with some ideas. But if you have any, um, tweet us and uh, let us know. Yeah, great. So I'm really pleased that we're back, Luke, um, and that we got to do this again. And I look forward to next week where we've watched um, more films than we can talk about that. And yeah, I'm just hoping to get back to the cinema this week. Yes, I hope you do. And I hope you enjoy James Bond. Are you a big into James Bond or are you sort of middling with it? Yeah, I mean, I've always liked Bond. Um, because as a kid, there were always there was a constant one. They there were a constant. There was new ones coming out, and they're always on. Like them films that used to be always on TV at Christmas, but or whenever. Do you know what I mean? You yeah, they were always James Bank Bond. Holiday. Bond was on. Yeah, <laughs> but you don't get mine. It was Bond, Sinbad, and you know something else. But it's like uh, I always liked them, but I think I've enjoyed Daniel Craig's Bonds more than any other, apart from Goldeneye. But I think that might be because I played it a lot on the N sixty four. <laughs> yes. you know, I don't think I remember much about the film but I think uh, the Daniel Craig films are probably been my first so Skyfall I just thought was outstanding really 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 good Casino Royale so so yeah I'm a fan of Bond but a bigger fan of more recent Bond okay that's cool uh, in that case I think you'll enjoy it good I think you will um, but uh, be good to find out next week um, what you thought of it if yeah. you've managed to get to see it next week and if you're listening, it's good to be back. Get in touch. Let us know your thoughts about the things we've talked about, any topics you want to discuss. If you want to come on and chat about things, then let us know. We'd love to have you on. Yes. And if you're looking forward to the new Home Alone film, let us know. Because I don't know whether anybody is. Anybody. Must be somebody somewhere. No, the kid that's playing Kevin. It's not even <laughs> Kevin, is it? I don't know who he is. But no. there's, there's a copper in it with McAllister on his back, so I imagine that's Buzz. It's like, come on. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. so wonderful way. well thank you everyone for joining us this week um, we'll be back more in our regular format as we go on but it is good to be back it is good to talk about films again and uh, looking forward to talking about all the new things coming up in the next couple of weeks I'm trying to think what's coming out soon um, there, must be, there must be something good about to come out Eternals comes out soon isn't it yeah Eternals and there was a few as I had a look last night, but there was nothing that I really wanted to see. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then Ghostbusters is coming soon. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again next time.